Hi everyone, welcome to the Ask Dr. Lynn show where I answer questions that hit Bakerpedia every day. I am Lynn Carson, CEO of Bakerpedia, the only place you should go to if you need your technical baking questions answered on the go. What I do on the show is to answer the questions that are the most important to the commercial baker. Yeah, you know when your line is spitting out thousands of buns per hour into the waste bin? Who has the time to go do an hour long research on the internet? on why your buns are not making spec. Well, this is what the show is for. So place any comments on the topics that you're researching on on Bakerpedia. And if you're lucky, I'll answer them on this show. Or send them to askdrlin at bakerpedia.com. All right, I'm gonna focus today's show on artificial preservatives. Today's uh, show is brought to you by JNK Ingredients. With their bread made products, you can safely replace artificial preservatives on your ingredient label. To make your label go from calcium propionate to cultured wheat, use bread made. To get a sample, go to jnkingredients.com. Now, the first question asks, I want to increase the shelf life, but I don't want to use artificial preservatives in our bread. Please give me ideas on how to do this. Well, a very common concern among commercial bakers is how to make their products labels, product labels more approachable to consumers while achieving a longer shelf life. The shelf life of uh, bread is particularly ch challenging in this regard because we don't have the benefit of low water activity um, and high level of texturizers that we do in most sweet baked goods. When we discuss shelf life extension, we are generally talking about two approaches. The preservation of texture, which is preventing staling, and the, preservation, the prevention of microbial spoilage of the product. The preservation of texture can be achieved through the addition of a number of ingredients, including em enzymes, emulsifiers, or crumb softeners, or even sugars and fats. While sugars and fats sound like an easy solution, these ingredients have additional functions that will add flavor and color to the final product. Not to mention, they will impart processing um, difficulties like longer mix times, softer and stickier doughs, less structure to both the dough and finished product. Ingredients commonly considered as artificial preservatives for texture to achieve a softer crumb over time are emulsifiers such as SSL, which is sodium stereolactylate, CSL, calcium stereolactylate, monoglycerides, and more. And as we clean up our labels, the use of enzymes have been at the forefront of clean label users for crumb softening. You can use enzymes to replace these texture affecting ingredients. Certain types, certain types of amylase enzymes can perform to benefit the softness of the product. But the choice of enzyme will really depend on the thermal profile of the product during baking. Because starch gelatinizes at 140 to 167 degrees Fahrenheit, um, if amylase are active during that time, um, dextrins will increase, starches will be broken down, and the crumb will become softer and thus resulting in less staling. If this process happens in excess, the crumb will become gummy, sticky, and fragile. So be careful when using uh, amylase as enzymes. Understanding the thermal profile of your product during baking and cooling as well as working with your suppliers will help you find the enzyme package that will work for your product. So, enzyme would be your number one solution to replace artificial preservatives for texture preservation. The other type of preservation is the prevention of microbial spoilage. Bread presents a big challenge in baking because it's an excellent medium for the growth of mold. Mold likes fairly warm temperatures, plenty of oxygen, a slightly acidic condition, and moisture. Bread produced without the use of any mold inhibitor will have mold appear on a product within three to five days if stored at room temperature. 
The first thing to remember in prevention of mold is that good sanitation practices are your best defense. More on this later. But this is always the most important factor. Mold inhibitors that we add as ingredients work by also lowering the pH. Mole likes a slightly acidic pH of 6 to 7. So these ingredients will create an environment that is less friendly to spoilage organisms like yeast, bacteria, and moles. The primary artificial preservatives or antimicrobials used in baked goods are benzoates, sorbates, and propionates. One of the important qualifications is that these ingredients will inhibit the growth of undesirable microorganisms, but they will not have a significant effect on yeast activity. Let's talk about the first category, and that is benzoate, commonly in the form of sodium benzoate. It is effective against many yeast molds and bacteria. It is only effective at a very low pH, 2.5 to 4.0, and it can restrict yeast activity. Therefore, this is not very good for uh, bread products. Benzoic acid is, however, naturally occurring in cranberries, prunes, and cinnamon. These are all great natural inhibitors, but adding too much cinnamon to the dough of your cinnamon raisin bread can slow your fermentation down. So the second, the second category um, are sorbates. Sorbates are very effective against mold and yeast and function at a slightly higher pH range up to 6.5. Because of this, they are not used in yeasted products either. And they see greater usage in chemically leavened sweet goods that have a naturally higher pH than bread products. Potassium sorbate is water-soluble, so it can be used as a topical spray on the surfaces of big products such as tortillas. The last category is propionates. Calcium propionate is the most widely used mold inhibitor for bread products in commercial baking, mainly because they are effective against mold, but not yeast or bacteria. However, with one exception, it is really effective against rope. So, the fact that it doesn't inhibit yeast growth makes it ideal for use in breads in addition to its functionality at a lower pH range, which is less than 5.5 pH. Ingredients that are considered natural mold preservatives include three kinds, vinegar, raisin juice, and fermented products like wheat, corn, and dairy whey. Dairy whey. The first kind of, of uh, natural preservative is vinegar, which is a sauce of acidic acid used at a level of probably 0.5 to 1 percent at a 200 grain strength. The type you buy at the grocery store is more diluted for household use and is at a um, average of 45 grain strength. So 45, 200. You see the difference. Um, while vinegar will reduce pH, it is not very effective alone. Remember, vinegar is a pH adjuster. Um, it's not an antimicrobial. It's more commonly used with other mold inhibitors such as calcium propionate um, to, for it to work properly. So, the second kind of natural mold inhibitor is raisin juice concentrate. It can be used at about 5 to 10 percent for breads with a darker crumb. Tartaric acid is also the active component in raisins, so don't forget that the addition of sugars with raisin juice may require a formula adjustment for total sugar. Finally, the third kind are a number of fermented products that harness the byproducts of fermentation of flour and dairy to create um, a high concentration of organic acids that will inhibit mold growth with minimal effect on yeast activity. Things like cultured wheat, which will help you achieve a longer shelf life and has become the go-to solution for many commercial bakers. In these products, uh, wheat flour is fermented with a kind of bacteria typically found in dairy. 
Fun fact. Propionic acid was first discovered in the bacteria responsible for creating the holes in Swiss cheese. Now, this fermentation process naturally produces acidic acid and propionic acids that inhibits mold growth in baked products over a wide, wide pH range. If the function of cultured wheat flour is to inhibit mold and the active component is propionic acid, why is it clean label? The question is, should it be labeled as a preservative for full transparency? Now, it's important to remember that many of the natural acids that are active comp compounds and preservatives are originally byproducts of fermentation. The natural process of fermentation and its byproducts have always provided a longer shelf life for our foods. Propionic acid is just one of the products that is the result of this natural fermentation process. And it occurs in foods from cheese to baked goods with the result and benefit of a longer shelf life. Therefore, naturally occurring acid is clean label. In other systems, sugar is a preservative for lowering water activity, salt is a preservative for meats. Many other naturally occurring ingredients have functions as preservatives. Because an ingredient has other function in taste and texture, we shouldn't be labeling based on those functions. We should just be transparent and label the whole ingredient that is added to the formula. In this case, it should be labeled as cultured wheat. So in answer to whether it should be relabeled as a preservative, the answer is no. Next question is, um, can I make cultured wheat myself and use it in my bakery? The process of making the highly concentrated cultured wheat products we use as ingredient in commercial baking is not replicable in a bakery condition and is not quite the same thing as sourdough. The preferments and sourdoughs that utilize lactic acid bacteria to create unique flavors also inhibit spoilage and improve texture to some extent, but they are not nearly as effective as industrial cultured wheat or similar products. So no, you cannot make cultured wheat yourself. It's not advisable. You may end up with a soupy mixture that may or may not work. Next question. Okay. Does cultured wheat come in liquid or dry and why? So, cultured wheat comes in a dry free flowing powder as this provides the maximum concentration and stability with the ease of scaling and handling for the commercial baker. I guess it can come in liquid form with a shorter expiration date, but why? Why pay for the transportation of water and a shorter shelf life before you can use it? Use the dry product, okay? Because it, it just makes sense to use dry. Um, the next question says, uh, next question asks, why does the cultured wheat product that I use make my bread smell so sour? Well, that's because you're using too much. So, bring it down a notch bigger don't need to use so much cultured wheat don't forget clean your surroundings use less cultured wheat so that your product doesn't stink like cheese um, one of the reasons why your products stink like cheese is because of the propionic acid propionic acid at a higher level is considered um, a cheesy sour flavor and this may be detected as a, an aroma in some of your products. So it's always good to keep in communication with your ingredient supplier to help you learn how to use their products in a way that maintains your quality standards. So let's stop the blame on the cultured wheat. Clean more, use less cultured wheat so that your product doesn't smell cheesy, okay? Next question. Why does the cultured wheat product not work as well as calcium propionate? What can I do to create a longer shelf life without mold? Alright, million dollar question. So, you do know that natural solutions are going to be weaker than your synthetic counterparts, right? 
it's the process that creates the high concentration and effectiveness of that artificial product that makes them artificial. Don't forget. So part of that package is that, you know, I have to remind you that prevention is the best and the most important safeguard against the growth of spoilage organisms. No preservatives is going to save you if your product is contaminated after baking. So, clean up! The most cr critical time for your bread is during cooling. When the product is between about 160, about 160, 165 degrees Fahrenheit or about 70 degrees Celsius, um, it is usually packaged. Um, the baking kill step really sterilizes the bread, right? So it, 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 it cleans it of any kind of mold. So um, understanding where contamination is coming from during cooling is the key prevention. Your main sources for contamination during this critical period are as follows. Follow these eight points to, keep cre to, to help create a longer shelf life without mold. So, one, people can contaminate equipment and product. That is why we should expect employees to wash their hands on a regular basis or use gloves more commonly today. Especially if your people are handling a finished products, a finished product. Put those gloves on and be clean and change those gloves out regularly. Two, air or atmospheric compressed air carries mold spores. You should keep all doors and windows closed as well as have positive air pressure in the plant and all air should be filtered. All air handling units should be clean and sanitized on a regular basis. Proper attention should be given to compressed air lines as well. Number three, equipment must be clean on a regular basis to ensure they are free of mold and all food contact surfaces must be properly clean and sanitized. Now, this is a must because whenever the food is coming into contact with something, that thing needs to be sterilized and clean. This is especially important in cooling conveyors and packaging equipment, especially whatever's after the oven. Now, organic debris is the number four concern. So organic debris, debris should not be allowed to accumulate. So things like old products, stales, crumbs, waste, dough, etc. These should not be allowed to accumulate in food product zones or even in the proximity of food product zones. The organic debris provides a great home for mold. And once mold establishes itself, it produces more spores. So trash containers are notorious for having mold. It, so trash containers should be clean and sanitized on a regular basis, like every day. So next point, number five, dead spots. Dead spots within the building are areas which are not receiving regular cleaning and sanitizing. Go clean your dead spots, please. All right, so number six is packaging. Packaging could be a source of mold contamination. Make sure that you properly store packaging material as well as keep boxes closed tight. Don't let packaging be exposed, okay? It's never okay to do that. Number seven, return products. Nobody ever have return products, ever. Not, okay. Return products, don't, you know, don't just leave the return products anywhere you wanna leave it, you know, um, it's yucky. I mean, when someone returns returns something to your bakery, you did, you have no idea where it's been to. So ju don't be dunking, dumping return products onto new products because there's always a risk of contamination. I know sometimes your receiving area is next to your cooling area, right? So try to keep your returns in a whole other area, okay? Because it's only crucial that 
you just make sure whatever's in your cooling area is clean and sanitized. Number eight, um, if you're in a humid area, ingredients can be stored and become a medium for mold to grow. So either separate your storage and cooling area or ensure that all your products are stored at correct temperatures and properly contained. Preferably, no ingredient storage should be done after the kill set, which is, which is the oven. And never any ingredient storage in the bread cooling area, okay? Remember that. <laughs> all right. That's all the artificial preservative questions I can comment on today. Remember, if you have more questions, we have boot camps coming up at the Wheat Marketing Center. Click here on this link to sign up. There are limited sittings, so sign up today. If you have more questions for me, send them to askdrlin at bakerpedia.com. It's time to wrap up. So, Bakerpedia remains free because of our sponsors. So please support our sponsors. This session is brought to you by j &K Ingredients, a leading manufacturer of bakery ingredients for the baking industry globally. Go to jkingredients.com to learn more and get samples. And remember, we are able to do all this research and writing for you for free because of sponsors. Keep Bakerpedia fee free. Support our sponsors. And please like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Share the video with your coworkers who can benefit from it. And till the next time, bakers have a question, Bakerpedia. Bye.